I built the ultimate personal assistant that can draft your emails, summarize meeting notes, create Google Docs, and so much more using Langflow and multi-agent architecture. Stay tuned to see how I did it. Hi everyone, my name is Melissa and I'm a developer relations engineer. Let's jump into Langflow and show you exactly what this app does. Uh, first, you might be looking at this and think, what am I even looking at? Langflow is a visual IDE for AI app development. So all of these boxes that you see here are what we call components. And each of these components serves as a piece to your AI app from end to end. So each of these things, if you look closely, we have prompt, we have a Gmail agent, we have an agent orchestrator, and we're gonna go into a little bit more of what these are. But behind each of these is actually code. So this code, if you're familiar with Langchain, Langflow is built on top of Langchain, and they all are functional functioning pieces. And there are so many more that you can choose from. On the left side here, we have a bunch of different components, whether it is different places to retrieve your data, um, different models, different vector stores, and so on. So let's walk through what this app does. Say I am an assistant, and as an assistant, I have to do several things for you. Like I mentioned earlier, maybe creating an email draft, maybe creating a Google Doc, etc. So as an assistant myself, I have to use different tools. If I have to send an email, I'm gonna be using maybe Gmail. If I have to create a Google Doc, maybe a Google Doc. If I have to call someone, I'm gonna use my phone. I'm using different tools to perform different tasks. Think of an agent as pretty much the same thing. When you ask your LLM something, it's only trained to the knowledge that it knows and only has the abilities and only has so many abilities. So with an agent, you actually empower your LLM by adding the ability to call different tools. So with those tools, again, you can perform different tasks based on the queries that the user submits. So for example, in my case, um, I can put in an action item and some context, and then I'm telling my agent to perform the action item for me. And what this orchestrator agent does here is it determines which tool that it needs to use to perform that action. So for example, if we go through the different um, tools that we have here, we have a Gmail agent, we have a Google Docs agent, and we have a RAG agent. And notice how I have agents connected to my orchestrator agent. This is called a multi-agent architecture. And within these agents, they have tools that they have access to. So for the Gmail agent, we're actually using a third-party tool called Composio that has API access to, uh, or that has access to Gmail's API. And this can perform different actions um, related to Gmail. Similar here with the Google Docs agent. And then down below with our RAG agent, we're using DataStax's AstroDB um, as a vector store. And then we're vectorizing the data and then using it using that for vector search to then be used in our RAG agent. So let's see it in action, shall we? Let's test it out. Within here, I already have just some random context. It's not real, just keep that in mind. And I'm going to ask it something like, summarize the meeting context and put it in a Google Doc. Give it a respective title based on the information. And what's gonna happen here is that my request is gonna to go to the orchestrator agent and the orchestrator agent is gonna determine which tool that it needs to use. So if all goes well, it should call the Google Docs agent and we should see that in just a second. So right now the agent pops up, it's processing the information and as we suspected, it's trying to access or it is accessing the Google Docs agent. And the output that we received back, the meeting says summary has successfully been created in the Google Doc titled blah, blah, blah. And you actually get the link to view the document itself. So great, we get a summary of the information. We have the key discussion points. We have the action items. So all very relevant information. And it was able to create the document for me and give it a title. Amazing. So what if I wanted it to create an email draft? Let's give it this document as an example instead of a body of text, right? So here we gave it a body of text. Let's now try to give it just a Google Doc link. And then I will open a new chat and I will say summarize or read the Google Doc and create an email draft um, with key takeaways and action items. Give it a subject line based 
uh, relevant to the information. So here we're actually accessing two tools, right? It's using the Google Docs agent to access the Google Doc, and then it's going to use the Gmail agent to then create the draft for the email. So we should see the agent making those decisions and reasonings here um, in the playground. It is reading the Google Doc, it's summarizing it, it's executed the Google Docs agent, and then now it's accessing the Gmail agent. Perfect, and we received back that the email's been successfully created, but if you don't believe me, we can actually pop into my drafts, give this a refresh, and we see that the email has now been created. So it's given it as su a subject line, and it's given the body of text for the draft. And of course, you can tell it to address it to specific people, but just for the demo, it is uh, giving it an example email. So really great stuff there. We are able to create an email draft. We're able to create a Google Doc. We're able to read a Google Doc and take the context from that Google Doc. How about the RAG agent? So the RAG agent in this context is going to have some dummy data. But if you were in your own company, then you can put in your own information that's maybe proprietary to um, or domain specific for your company. So um, that's the purpose of RAG, right? R uh, retrieval augmented generation. Our LLMs, again, are only trained to whatever knowledge that it was given um, from the internet that's public. So if you have things that are pertaining to your company and your company only, this is the information that you would use in a RAG, um, in a RAG pipeline. So that was actually kind of the reason why we even built this. Um, it was a request from within my company, uh, my product operations team, and they asked me if we were able to create some assistant that can do these things for them. And they were wondering if we could also do it with Langflow. And at DataSax, we do like to dog food our products. So I said, give me the challenge, we'll figure out how to do it. And probably within a week, we were able to spin this up and just evaluate and spin it up and have this working prototype. So you could see just how fast you're able to uh, c create things within Langflow, um, connect different tools and get all the relevant information that you need to build an assistant like this. So depending on your own use case and what your company needs, you can even add more tools to expand this a bit further. So with this RAG agent and for this example here, going back to this, um, I gave it some dummy information too, specifically information about Alice in Wonderland. And we can actually pop in and see what that looks like here in DataStack's AstroDB. So I've given it the text to Alice in Wonderland. It's vectorized it, it's chunked it, and then vectorized those chunks and then put them in here. So you can see um, has chapter one, chapter two, turtle, Alice, etc. And let's kick this off. So for each agent, you give it a name as well, and you give it a description just so that the orchestrator agent knows when to call the tool. So for here, I gave it the description that when it's asked about Alice in Wonderland to use this tool. So let's see if it does that as well. So what is, right, summarize Alice in Wonderland for me, give me the key points. And why not put it in a Google Doc with a relevant title. So again, I gave it the description to access the RAG agent if we were asked about Alice in Wonderland, which it is doing right now. So it is accessing that, it is getting the relevant information by doing a vector search. It's taking those search results, it's putting that into the prompt to generate the summary, and then it'll hopefully use the Google Docs agent to then create the Google Doc, which it's doing right now. So it, they've summarized the key points of Alice in Wonderland and it's created the doc. We could find it using this link and boom, there we have it. We have the summary of Alice in Wonderland created in a doc for us. And that was a gist of the personal assistant that I built in Langflow using a multi-agent architecture. Again, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't stop here. You could definitely expand this across many more tools. So you could put a calculator tool in there. You could have it access the internet using the URL tool that we have here on this side of the components. You can have it access Slack, depending on what your use case is and how you wanna use it within your organization. Um, and all of this can be done in Langflow fairly easily as I've demonstrated here. So I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned a little bit about whether it's Langflow or multi-agents or just understanding a simple agent in general, or if you're just getting into AI. We hope you keep in touch, chat with us on Discord, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.